Hello, everyone, and welcome to the big show. This is Investing and Trading Live, sponsored by TradingAcademy.com. If you're a first-time listener, thank you for stopping by. My name is Josh Lilquist, and we are happy to have you with us today. As always, with my good friend and my good pal, and he is looking good, probably feeling good, but I'm still going to ask him, Mr. Al Connickson, how are you doing today? You called it. I am feeling great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. It's almost like I have ESP or ESPN, whatever the kids are calling it you've these got, days. You've got something that I've been worried about. You're right. Hey, why? You know, you're always so worried about me. Yeah, well, maybe with good reason. There you go. Well, yeah, it's good. But, it's, my, uh, but I love sitting uh, across from me here doing this radio show. It's, it's my highlight. Of the, of the week. Well, thank you for that. We have a good time talking about the markets, all the outtakes. For those people watching the YouTube stream that's live, they get a couple extra outtakes. But uh, Al, we're going to talk about the financial markets this this today, and or this whole week, actually, because mm-hmm. we the market is nearing an all-time high <clears throat> once again. So it's been since 2021, actually the last, it was almost, I believe it was the last trading day of 2021 was the high. And we are approaching that high again. Market, as far as the S and P five hundred, is uh, you know less than five percent away from there, depending on when you listen to the show. But market was kind of stuck in a rut from November seventeen till roughly this week, and it just didn't do a whole lot. There was some different news coming out. We'll talk about the Fed funds rate here uh, later on the show here today. But just it slowed down, but now we're reaching those all-time highs again, especially the S&P 500. The Dow Jones was out of that rut and reaching those highs. And the same thing with the NASDAQ. So it, it, it's bringing the, 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 the holiday cheer to the average investor. But don't be so sure because there are opportunities where it doesn't matter which way the market goes. And that's what I want to discuss here is, doesn't matter which way this market moves. We just want it to move. There's opportunities in up markets. We'll talk about that. There's opportunities in down markets and in those sideways markets. But what could this market potentially do when we get or if we get to those all-time highs once again? Al, with news, everything, the opportunities that you're seeing, what's your take on this market? And uh, let's do it. Well, you know, you, you just mentioned that we're, we're approaching all-time highs Uh if you go back to the end of 2021 into the beginning of, of 2022 and look at where the markets were, all those indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, now we're just getting back to where they were then. So people are, are looking at this year. This is a great year. They're feeling pretty good. And the concern is that you get this feeling of euphoria thinking this market can never stop going up. But look at what happened back in 2022. Into 20, In 2022, the market crashed. All those indexes were down. The people that are euphoric about where they are now actually are just getting to the point where they can start making a profit. They're just getting back what they lost over that time period. So mm-hmm. you got to be really careful. When we see a market like this where things are looking good, the people that have been maybe sitting on the sidelines or missed out, this is when they jump in. That's typically one of the riskiest uh, times to be getting into the market. The markets are always going to pull back. There will be pullbacks. There will be better opportunities. But what we're seeing now, number one, near the end of the year, in November and December, that's typically a good time for the market. We get uh, into December, the first week in January, we have that Santa Claus rally often. Uh, And what we see happening, we see a lot of the mutual funds and the uh, uh, hedge funds that are rebalancing their portfolios, what I would call account doctoring. They want to get rid of the dogs and, and maybe put some positions together in stocks that have done well for the year. So when they send their, their statements out to their clients, the clients see that, oh, yeah, they were in this stock. That it looks fantastic. good. Yeah, not necessarily making any money on it, but it's in the portfolio. Did you call it window dressing? I call, it's, I call it account doctoring, but it's window dressing is what they call it. And there's also there's been some tax loss harvesting, a lot of things going on the latter part of the year. And people may be making uh, contributions to their retirement plans. That money goes into the market. So there are a lot of things that are that have been providing kind of headwinds for this market. And, and to be honest with you, the, the reason that we've seen the big move that we have is, again, getting back to those big tech stocks, the, 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 the Magnificent Seven. They've really been the driver of the market. And, uh, and people, I think, are feeling confident that the Fed's going to stop raising interest rates or maybe starting to lower interest rates. So those are the two primary movers of the market so far. We did see something kind of interesting 
last week, and I believe it was on Monday, it was the first time in a long time that all seven of those stocks were down. I think maybe except for I think Microsoft might have been up. But for the most part, the Magnificent Seven took a bath one day, and people were thinking, well, maybe there's going to be a rotation now. And uh, and it didn't last long. They they started to come back up again. But you know, it's crazy that you that you say that because I remember looking at the price charts and I saw a lot of those major stocks were down, but the overall market was up. That's correct. It didn't yes. make any sense. Yeah, which which is a good sign because you don't want just a handful of stocks to be driving the market. Which you it know? has been. Which it has been. So that was a sign, at least for one day that maybe there was more uh, uh, you know, contribution by some of the other stocks that, would, that were uh, driving the market up. And, that's, and that was the case. But you know, we, we just gonna need to start with the basics, Josh. When we teach mm-hmm. our students, we want to kind of simplify things and, and then just really concentrate on what moves price. And what moves price is the flow of money into and out of stocks or positions. But for significant moves, which is what is going to make you successful or or you're not successful, is identifying the the moves by Wall Street and the pros. Those are the significant moves in the stock cause and the markets caused by the inflow of their money or the outflow of their money. Yeah, and that's uh, I'm glad you brought that up because people think the markets are very complex and very difficult to understand and really a lot of that is by, by design it sure is. it's the terminology that they throw out at, the, at you and if you haven't been educated on something like that yeah of course it's going to look a little bit foreign to you but that's why it's set up that way because it, the wall street is always making money the big banks institutions are always profiting and if you look at the public they typically struggle with their finances and it's designed for people to be a, scared of that but that's why we have power trading investing classes or power trading workshops here at the academy because we're helping people with that financial literacy and then once you understand what some of the terms mean what some of the things that they're saying the interest rates hawkish dovish all this crazy stuff and it's just a different term it's kind of like a, a mechanic you go to a, a, a shop and, and you say hey can you go hand me that that, that thingy over there. And they say, you mean the wrench? Yeah, well, there's just different terms that they use. It's the more of the technical terms. And that's what we want to help our listeners and our people that are coming to these power trading workshops. Understand how these markets work, how to simplify the market, and understanding, as Al was talking about, how to identify the moves by Wall Street so we can invest and trade with them. So I want to invite people to this power trading workshop right here at the Academy. They're two hours. Al teaches these, I teach these as well. And we talk about how to simplify the market. So simply just text the word investing to the number 210, 210 for two seats for this class. You're going to get a text back or you can go to investwithota.com. That's investwithota.com. Coming up next, I want to talk about the financial markets, the income strategies for people that are working during the day that want opportunities at night. This is Josh and Al. We will be right back.